Ricky, I'm Anthony L. Elmore, President and Founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. We are not only the Black Buddhist voice in America, but we are the Black Buddhist voice of the world, whereas we include our Black history, culture, and language in the Buddhist teachings. Today, we have a very exciting Black Buddhist lecture for you. Our lecture today is called The Black Buddhist Lecture on Egypt by Anthony Alp O'Moore Sr. Let me explain why this lecture is significant. Buddhist history is Black history in that Africa, in that Buddhism was in Africa over 1,000 years before Buddhism made it to Japan or in Asia. Now, understand that the Japanese, the Chinese, and the Orientals and their type of Buddhism has extricated all black Buddhist history from their teachings. Now, in regards to black history, white supremacy and racism extricated black history out of Egypt, whereas Egypt is in Africa. The co-relationship between black history in Egypt and Buddhism is the fact that the way white supremacy extricated black history out of Egypt was extricating the black Buddhist history out of Egypt. Let's take this thing further. First and foremost, the very thing that you should know about the ancient Egyptians is that they were not only Buddhists. You can recognize a Buddhist via the Buddhist logo. The Naga or the snake is the Buddhist logo. When you look at the Egyptians, you will see the snake. The snake represents Buddhism. You see, the snake represents the Buddha or Buddhist. As we see in medicine, the snake was associated with wisdom, healing, and resurrection due to its ability to shed its old skin and growing into a new one. Now, let's get to the meat as to why the story of black Buddhists is not told. You see, in ancient times, there were years and years of wars between Buddhists and Brahmins, and the Brahmins in India, who were originally black. You see, the black Brahmins brought whites into India to subdue black Buddhists. The children of the black Brahmins who mixed with the whites, who we call Semites, became the Brahmins. The Brahmins would later defeat the Buddhists and they erased all black Buddhist history. Now, if you are a black person, this is what you must understand about ancient Buddhism. Our black ancestors were the founders of civilization. In order to extricate black Buddhists out of civilization and promote white supremacy, white races destroyed black Buddhist history. You see, in regards to my black Buddhist history, I learned the history from two main sources. The first source where I learned black Buddhist history was from the 18th century a Buddhist historian or historian, Sir Godfrey Higgins, who came out of Britain in his 1836 book, The Anaclipsis. Now, the second source what I learned was through the Buddhist teachings of the 13th century black Buddhist sage 
Nitrin Shoma. Now, what makes me unique is that I am a Nitrin Buddhist and I have been a Buddhist at the time of this lecture for over 52 years. I practiced the teachings of the 13th century Black Buddhist sage Nitrin Shoma. Now, this Nitrin wrote his teachings in a compilation of letters called the Go Show. This is like our Black Buddhist Bible. Now, in regards to understanding history and the world, Nitrin wrote in what he called Go Shows. Now, the Go Shows, again, are letters that Nitrin wrote. And he did a go show title, The Opening of the Eyes, that reads, quote, There are three types of doctrines to be studied. They are Confucianism, Brahmanism, and Buddhism, unquote. You see, in regards to any black person learning the true history of Egypt, you must learn the history history and the story of the Brahmins. You see, what you must understand is that the Brahmins and Brahmanism not only erased our black Buddhist history out of Egypt, Brahman teachings created a world culture of delusion and ignorance. When you erase black Buddhist history, you are also erasing black history. Now, it would be rare to find any black person in America who has any idea of Roman history or the story of Roman history and how Brahmanism affects the lives of black people worldwide. In this lecture, I will introduce to you how Brahmanism erased our black Buddhist history. You see, so we are clear. Brahmanism erased black Buddhist history. Therefore, black people have no idea that the ancient black civilizations, including Egypt, were built by black Buddhists. You see, unknown and untold, British historian Garfield Higgins names Stonehenge in Britain a black Buddhist temple. See, let me share with you the untold and unknown history of the Brahmins. See, originally, the Brahmins were the black religious teachers in India. We can actually trace the dates in history as to when the Semite Brahmins got into power in India. The Brahmins changed not only Indian, India, the Brahmins changed the world. Today, the world mostly operates on Brahman or Brahmanic teachings. You see, you must understand what you must understand about India is the story of India. The story of India is a perpetual fight between the Buddhists and the Brahmins. This fact is confirmed by the great Dalit Buddhist leader, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, who said, quote, History of India is nothing but a conflict between Buddhism and Brahmanism. Now, let me give you a little history. You see, in 185 B.C., the Brahman general, Push Yamitra, assassinated the last Mar ruler, Brit. Hadatra. See, this was done at a military parade and Push Yamitra assumed royal power and he was a Brahman who put a bounty on the head of every Buddhist. He paid a hundred pieces of gold for anybody who would kill a Buddhist monk or a Buddhist teacher. The Buddhists had to leave India and they left and no, there was no more Buddhism because Pushyamitra organized the Shinga 
empire and he killed all Buddhists and out of this came a new religion called Hinduism. Now, please understand that it is because of Roman teachings that we black people do not know about the Indus Valley civilization and its relationship to Egypt. You see, this is what you must understand about Buddhism that is unknown and untold. The historical Buddha Shakyamuni was known as the younger Buddha. However, the elder Buddha of India was none other than Hermes Tramagestas. You see, this is what the 18th century British historian Sir Godfrey Higgins write, writes about the subject in his 1836 book, The Anacliptus. He writes, quote, Colonel Franklin says, the learned Maurice entertains no doubt that the elder Buddha of India is none other than the elder Hermes Tramagestas of Egypt and that original character of the anti the Luvian race. You see, the question is, did Hermes Tramagestas also build the Indus Valley civilization? This is how racism, white supremacy, and even black-on-black -black racism misleads us. While we cannot connect Egypt and India, the question to ask is, did Egypt influence India or did India influence Egypt? See, this is the fact of science. The Indus Valley civilization in India is the world's oldest and first civilization. It was found recently that the Indus era dates back further than thought, older than Egypt and Mesopotamia. When we talk about ancient India, we are speaking about or the Africans of Asia. What is untold about the Africans of Asia is our black Buddhist history. You see, it is white supremacy racism of the Brahmins of India that erase all black Buddhist history. See, this is what Nichiren Shonen, the black Japanese sage, writes about Brahmanism in the and the non-Buddhist teachings of India in a Gosho. Now there's a Gosho title, The Three Tripitaka Masters Pray for Rain. And it reads, quote, These non-Buddhist teachings came about through a mistaken reading of the various sutras of the Buddhas who preceded Shakyamuni Buddha. Unquote. You see, there are a few points we want you to understand, and that is there were sutras, and there were Buddhas who preceded Shakyamuni Buddha. See, Shakyamuni is called the young Buddha, but Hermes Tramagestas of Egypt was the elder Buddha. You see, Godfrey Higgins writes in the Anacliptus, quote, Colonel Franklin says the learned Maurice entertains no doubt that the elder Buddha of India is none other than the elder Hermes Tramagestas of Egypt and the original character of the anti de Lavudian race. Unquote. You see, Hermes Tramagestas is considered the founder of science, mathematics, geometry, alchemy, philosophy, medicine, and magic. In India, he was known as the Elder Buddha who was honored in both Egypt and India. You see, Buddhism originally came from Africa, came from Egypt. You see, the religions of India and the religions of Egypt was the same. It was the same Buddhism and the same people. You see, Please understand and listen very carefully. Black people in Egypt and the black people of India are the same people who spoke the same language. Now, the black 
or African Indus Valley civilization was twice as large as Egypt and Mesopotamia combined. They had urban planning, indoor toilets. They were a very sophisticated civilization. Now, let's go back to 185 BC again. The Brahmin general Push Yamitra killed the Mirian king Brit Hadatra. Push Yamitra Shanga started the Shanga Empire. Push Yamitra's goal was to kill Buddhists. He put a bounty of paying 100 pieces of gold for the head of Buddhist priests. Now, what is very important to note is that, that Brahmanism evolved into a new religion called Hinduism. See, Hinduism only evolved uh, in the time of Christ around, you know, uh, uh, A.D. Now, the Buddhists of India fled India and they lived in Africa with their African brothers called the Nubians. They were called Naga in India and Nubian in Africa. After Buddhism left India, the Brahmins punished Buddhists with the worst inhumanity and humanity called the caste system. You see, they had a system of castes where the lighter skins were at the top and the dark skins were at the bottom. But they had a caste that was even worse and that was an outcast of the Chandelas or the Buddhists or the Dalits. They had a system that was so cruel and humanity, inhumane that they put human beings in a system of non-human. For example, a Dalit or a Chandela or an outcast could not even come out when the sun was out because even their shadow was polluting. They had to carry a broom, a tired broom to their ass so even the tracks of a Chandela was polluting. They had to tie a can on their neck because even their spittle was considered polluting. They can only own a dog and a donkey. And even if they heard what they called the sacred Vedas, molten iron was to be poured into their ears. And even if they spoke to a Brahmin, their tongue would get cut out. You see, this is one of the most horrible treatment of human beings in the history of mankind. Even today, the Chandellers or the outcasts or our Dalits brothers and sisters face the most horrendous inhumanity against humanity in human history. Now, this is what you must understand. Racism and whites destroyed the black image or that of blacks and the Negro type. They went into the mountains, they lost their language and history, and we rarely see the black phenotype in India, Egypt, or in Asia today. They exist, but they're into the mountains. Now, we mentioned 185 BC. Let's go back to the time of the Buddha. Shakyamuni, who was born. Now, archaeologist discovery puts Buddha's birth 300 years earlier. Let's look at the birth of the Buddha Shakyamuni. Science puts him being born about 7th century BCE. The question is not just how does Buddhism relate to Egypt, the question was how was Buddhism extricated from Egyptian history? The question is what happened to science in Egypt and India? See, the regression of science and medicine in India also happened in Egypt. What is unknown is that the Brahmins that were in India migrated to Egypt 
and they brought with the Roman teachings into Egypt that influence Egypt to this very day. While the Hindu Raiders have been disproven by signs, the Hindu Raiders and Hindu teachings would later influence Egypt. In regards to Roman teachings, there exists no archaeological, anthropological, sociological, genetic science, or literary science of Roman teachings and the stirs in Egypt, but we today consider the Roman teachings in Egypt as fact. Please note that Abraham, as taught by British historian Sir Godfrey Higgins, Abraham comes from the word Abraman. See, Abraham was the teachings of the Brahmins, and it was the teachings of Abraham that was brought into Egypt that changed all of Egypt that was used to erase black Buddhist history. You see, there is no evidence that the story of the Exodus ever took place in Egypt. These are Brahman teachings in Egypt. You see, in the second century AD, and in northern India was conquered by the Kushans. Notably, they had a king by the name of Kanishka, a former Brahman by the name of Ashwagosha talk the king into accepting Buddhism. Remember, in India, they had the caste system, whereas many left India depending on your caste. They created in India a new Buddhism called Mahayana Buddhism. You see, King Kanishka and Ashwagosha created this new Buddhism called Mahayana Buddhism whereas they extricated all black history, culture, and language. You see on the pictures of the Ganhara images, they changed the Buddha from black to white. Whenever you see Mahayana Buddhism, you will see a picture and not an archaeological carving because Mahayana Buddhism is white Buddhism or the teachings that extricate all black Buddhist history. Now, the Roman philosophy would not only turn the world against black Buddhism, black people, the Roman philosophy would turn the world against science, history, and education. The Romans created and made up a history that even to this time of this lecture, people treat Roman history as science and Facts. Please understand that what is unknown and untold is that both the Buddhists and the Brahmins would travel to Africa and particularly their stories would become so engrafted into the history of Egypt that at the time of this lecture in September of 2022, people not only believe the story of the Brahmins, even if you show irreparable evidence of black Buddhist history in Egypt and Africa, it would be denied even by black people. You see, in America and around the world, people adopted Brahman teachings and black people fear that their black Buddhist history, black people fear black Buddhist history because of Roman teaching. You see, in regards to Egyptian history and world culture, where there does not exist any archaeological, anthropological, sociological, literary science, documentary science of the story of the Exodus or Jews being put in slaves, this story gained, it gained legs and it is still believed that this story happened really in Egypt. See, the way that they used to get rid of black Buddhist teachings 
was the story of the Brahmins. The story of the Brahmins is the story of the Exodus that extricate blacks out of history. You see, again, this lecture's title, The Black Buddhist Lecture of Egypt. Please understand that for me as a black Buddhist teacher, I am really taking a risk even questioning the Brahman teaching. You see, the way I learned about the Brahman teachings is in the 1836 book titled The Anacryptus by British historian Godfrey Higgins, who notes that the Indian god Brahma and Brahmanism moved into Egypt by a Brahman. See, a Brahman later became known as Abraham. The teachings of Brahmins and Brahmanism became known as Abrahamic teachings that evolved into Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Now, let's talk about Egypt. Just Google or have any educated or reasonable person to put up any kind of evidence of Moses and the Exodus. See, we read and hear about the story of the Ten Commandments. However, there is no evidence of this story to have ever taken place. Please understand how the Brahmins got rid of Buddhism in India and how they got rid of Buddhism in Africa. They came up with an ingenious plan. You see, the Brahmins incorporated the Buddha into the Hindu pantheon of the gods and they made Buddha white and they put him in a lower caste and they changed history. You see, the Brahmins implemented the same plan in the West. You see, please understand that Hinduism and Judaism is the same religion. The story of God, Noah's Ark, and similar stories came from Hinduism. You see, in regards to Christianity, the story of Jesus is the story of Buddha. You see, the Old Testament are Brahman teachings and the New Testament are Buddhist teachings. At the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, they combined the British god Jesus with the Eastern Buddhist god Krishna uh, from the East and they came up with the name Jesus Christ. It was Hesnus Krishna, but he later became Jesus Christ. Now, the Black Buddhist history as it relates to the Christian religion goes untold. You see, Sir Godfrey Higgins writes in the Anacleptus about ancient Nubia. And this is what he said, quote, Mr. Franklin says, another striking instance is recorded by the very intelligent, intelligent traveler Wilson regarding the representation of, of the fall of our parents, sculptured in the magnificent temple of Istanbul in Nubia. He says that a very exact representation of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden is to be seen in that cave and the serpent climbing the tree is especially delineated. And the whole subject of the tempting of our first parents and most accurately exhibited. How is the fact that the mythos of the second book of Genesis being found in Nubia, probably a thousand miles from Helophilus, to be accounted for except it came from Upper Egypt with the first Buddhist or gymnast opus, unquote. You see, we have clear and empirical and archaeological evidence that the story of Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden written in, was written in Egypt and found in a cave by black Buddhists in Egypt. Now, on the other hand, there exists not one shred of evidence of Moses, 
the Exodus or Egyptians in writings. What you will find in Egypt is the same fraud we find in India, whereas the Romans used religion to erase black Buddhist history. You see, again, in his 1836 book, The Anaclipsis, Godfrey Higgins note that Abraham comes from the Brahman, or it means a Brahman. The Brahmins were the Abrahamic religious teachings, just as the Brahmins incorporated the Buddha into the Hindu pantheon, or they made the Buddha a Hindu god, the Brahmins simply incorporated Buddhist teachings with the Brahman teachings. Now, the greatest tool used in world history to erase black Buddhist history was Brahmanism. You see, it was the Brahmins in India who created the Aryan invasion theory. The word Aryans come from Hinduism where they told this story that about, about a bunch of so-called superior Aryans or white people coming to India, dominate the people because they were superior. This is the Aryan invasion theory. It was Adolf Hitler who read about the Brahmins who adopted the swastika from the Buddhist enlightenment and he used this because he believed in Aryanism. Now, please understand that Ramesses the Sakon the Great is the most common figure for the Exodus and the Pharaoh and one of the most long-standing rulers at the height of Egyptian power. And because Ramesses is mentioned in the Bible as the place we see in Genesis 4.17, the Exodus, please note that Ramses comes from Nubia. Now, the Brahmins took a black story and made it white. They also made the Jews white. Please note that the Jews were white, but they were the white Brahmin Jews. You see, let me give you some empirical evidence of black Jews. I want you to look at the Ethiopians in Africa, and they look exactly like the Southern Indians. At the time of Homer, India was known as Eastern Ethiopia. Now, it seems certain that classical historians and geographers call the whole region of Egypt to India, both countries, inclusive of the name Ethiopia. See, the name Ethiopia meant burnt skin, and it was a term coined by the Greeks. Now, they regarded all dark-skinned black people who inhabited the world as Ethiopians. You see, Sir Garfield Higgins writes, he says, the Yadavas, the most vulnerable immigrants from India, they were the blameless, pious Ethiopians whom Homer mentions and calls the remotest of mankind. Part of them say the old Hindu writers remain in this country and hence we read of two Ethiopian nations, the Western and the Oriental. Some of them lived to the Far East and they were the Yadavas who stayed in India while others resided far to the West. Yadava or Yada became known as Judah. There were Buddhists and Jews, the tribe of Judah or the line of the logo of the Buddha in, of Ethiopian rule in India. You see, the fact that the language and the white Romans created Sanskrit. Sanskrit comes from the language of Ethiopian Gese. The Indian Ethiopians migrated to Africa. Look at them. They migrated from India to what we call Ethiopia. You see, Abraham in the Bible is the same as Ramayana in Hinduism. 
The Hindu Brahmins hated Buddhism and their black skin so much they created the caste system in India, the birth of racism. We told you earlier that the book of Genesis came from the black Buddhists that actually told the story via a painting in Nubia or Egypt. You see, the Brahmins vilified the serpent via Abrahamic teachings of the story of Adam and Eve. See, this is what Garfield Higgins writes about the serpent. Quote, it possessed the faculty of renewing itself without the process of generation or fructification as an outward appearance by annually casting its skin. The annual renewal made it emblemical of the sun or the year. Thus, we see how these refined allegories rise out of one another, almost without end, generally to outward appearance absurd, but when understood, often beautiful. I think that no unprejudiced person reading Genesis would ever suspect that the serpent, their name, was the evil principle or the devil. The literal meaning, both of the text and the context, in fact, falsifies such ideas. And yet, almost all Christian priests choosing to have recourse to allegory to serve their own purpose. Though they never cease abusing those who teach that the book is an allegory, maintain that a real devil or evil prince was meant, that by the text merely a common serpent is not literally to be understood. The fact is, they have among them the tradition of the true oriental meaning, but how to explain it, they know not. You see, this idea of a snake talking and a devil, all this was put forward by the Romans. It is a teaching of ignorance. It has nothing to do with science. They put this story. See, in Buddhism, the story tells about replenishing life, Adam and Eve, but it's an allegory. But they will punish you even if you question the story and not come up with a real devil. You see, what we find in Egypt is the story of Brahmanism versus Buddhism. You see, it is is it just an accident that one of the greatest black leaders, Ramesses II, came from Nubia? Or clearly, black Egypt, we find a story about the Brahmins or the Exodus that erased not only black people in Egypt, the story also erased black Buddhist history. It is in Nubia that we find archaeological evidence of the Buddhist story, of the black Buddhist story of Genesis, whereas the Brahmins twisted the Buddhist story of Genesis, whereas they made the snake not an allegory, but this mystical devil. We find black queen Nefertari, ne Nefertari in Egypt and in Nubia. There is so much more to our black Buddhist lecture of Egypt. The story of Moses is a Brahman story that challenges Buddhism. You see, Buddhism deals in archaeology, archaeology, anthropology, sociology, literary science, documentary history, and even genetic science. You can simply take DNA from Mormons in Egypt and find their ethnicity. Brahman teachings would not allow you to question Brahmanism of Abrahamic religions. We question the story of Noah, Moses, Abraham with signs. 
let us end this lecture. There is no evidence of the story of Moses and the Exodus or Jewish slaves. There is historical evidence of Romans hidden Buddhism and Buddhists and the story of their erasing the true and untold black Buddhist history in Egypt. Anyway, I am Anthony L. Elmore, President and Founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association, bringing you a black Buddhist lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you.